What's up, YouTube? Poker Primer here. Primer ready to deliver you our week three matchup here in the PLW. This week we are taking on Michael and Neuvern, and his team referred to as Neuvern's Descent into Madness. I don't actually understand why that team name exists, why it has to be so long. That seems just kind of excessive and stupid sounding, but uh, that's just me. I don't mean to talk shit, but I'm talking shit. So, uh, his team consists of uh, Garchomp, Zerkatry, Metagross, Chandelure, Shuckle, Golbat, Gar Mega Gardevoir, Vaporeon, Venusaur, uh, Heracross, and Absol. So, uh, his Z Crystal users, by the way, are also Metagross and Chandelure. So, Z Chandelure and Z Metagross are uh, very both very, very solid. He went for the kind of same route I did with going for both two th tier three Z users, which is pretty cool. Um, very threatening still, at least, because Z Metagross is really, hits really, really hard, as well as uh, Shandy um, having a decent amount of coverage, so it can be very, very threatening as a Z user. A couple other things I want to note is he has um, Shuckle, which is a very annoying hazard setter, potentially because of sticky webs, which would be really, really annoying for me uh, in the broad scheme of things. I do have uh, Mega Sableye, so I could potentially um, magic bounce the fuck out of him and get sticky webs for me, which would be really great, but... Um, that's also going to be a pain in the ass to try to make that happen. Um, so, but I'm going to try my very best to pull that off. That'd be really cool. Um, he has Garchomp, which is a very massive threat. Um, Circuitry, which can sweep any team. You've seen me do it in the PTL uh, plenty before. It's doable. Um, Golbat's bulky and annoying. Big Gardevoir is a super big threat because of Psyshock and its ability to just set up and break through my Mega Sableye, like, it can break through the Mega Sableye Chansey Core, uh, if it gets up, like, a Calm Mind or two, uh, with Psyshock slash Hyper Voice, literally Calm Mind, Psyshock, Hyper Voice can just tear through, uh, the team really, really easily, uh, it doesn't even need a fourth move, it just, you can just run those three, um, I don't want it to have a fourth move, um, Vaporeon is fat and annoying, um, but we, I think we can easily deal with that one, uh, with things like Zapdos and, um, Shaman chilling on our team, like, I'm not worried about that at all. Um, Venusaur uh, is a bit of a threat. Um, if he can get up Sun for himself, that would be super duper strong, and I'd be really, really scared. Um, but that's, like, he has to get up the Sun to be as threatening as he possibly can be. Uh, Heracross is a threat, because Heracross is a very strong Mon. If it's Guts, it's going to be breaking through our team really easily, and, like, Unaware is not going to help with that, because it's not, like, a stat boost. It's, like, a, it's, a, it's an ability boost. So that's annoying. Uh, Absol is, it, is sh regular Absol shit. Regular Absol is shit, so I'm not scared of that at all. Like, that's that's just kind of there. It's just it's just there. He's not bringing Absol. There's no way he brings Absol to this game. If he brings Absol to this game, he's stupid. Um, so the first one we're going to be bringing to try to counter this team is our uh, Unaware Von Strangle, the Fable. I did not make you shiny or male, and it makes me angry. But, whatever. Uh, we are bringing our... Von Strangle, uh, with the Kevia Berry, fully specially defensive, uh, Clefable here, um, there's reason for that, there's reasons for that, and the reasons for that are, uh, one, I need us another, an alternate way of being able to, uh, take on the Mega Gardevoir, uh, if it starts setting up Calm Minds, this thing can actually take it on decently well, it doesn't appreciate the Psy Shocks as much, but, like, you can still take it on decently, uh, we also have Thunder Wave for that as well, so that's cool, um, <clears throat> We have the Kevia Berry for multiple reasons. Um, for Garchomp running Poison Jab, and for Venusaur running Sludge Bomb. Because with us being especially defensive, we will eat the Sludge Bomb very well, and we can Thunder Wave it slash starts and start psyching it, uh, start hitting it with Psychics, which would be really, really nice. Uh, we actually do outspeed it if it's paralyzed, so that's really cool. Um, as well as with Garchomp, we can, even though we're not physically defensive, we can still take a Poison Jab. And we can hit him with hit him back with a Moonblast and do a really big amount of damage to him back. So that'd be really, really cool. Um, just got to kind of hope that he doesn't get a poison with either of those moves on us. Because obviously due to the fact that us be, of us being unaware, we will be unable to... Um, we will be getting whittled uh, by all those moves happening. So or we will be getting whittled for sure. Um, and that would really, really suck. So, hopefully, um, hopefully that's not a thing that happens. 
Um, but you know, we'll we'll see what happens in the long run here. It's gonna it's gonna be a rough one for sure. It's gonna be a rough one, but I think we can pull. I think we can pull it off. I think we can. I think we do pretty well against it in the long run of the matchup. So I think this set will do very very nicely for us. Um, I will say originally I had soft boiled, but due to the fact that I'm running unaware because it's this hidden ability. Um, I can't get soft boil Clefable for some reason. I don't, I don't know exactly what the specifications are for uh, soft boil Clefable, but I cannot run it with unaware, which really sucks. But um, yeah, that's the plan there with uh, one strangle. Next up, we're bringing over easy our Chansey. Um, soft boiled Sizing Sauce, Thunder Wave, and Aromatherapy. Um, max HP, max defense, bold nature uh, with 8 and 2 deep. The Spadef, uh, with the EVLI obviously making this thing stupid bulky beyond words. Um, Chansey has a really good matchup this week because uh, looking at his team, um, you know, things like Zergatry, Chandelure, uh, Mega Gardevoir to an extent outside of like the Psy Shocks, uh, Venusaur, Vaporeon, uh, which is kind of hard wall. Uh, they really, really cannot do anything to us, and we can just start firing off Thunder Waves and just start paralyzing Mons on his team and then just kind of let them be slow and maybe get paired and, like, whittle them down with Seismic Toss. The only thing that we can't really fuck with with Seismic Toss is the Chandelure, but at the end of the day, I'm not too worried about that because if we can get it paralyzed, uh, that'll be great, as well as we have other Mons on our team that outspeed it, which can blow it away slash... Um, can eat hits from it pretty easily and blow it back uh, very well as well. So uh, I think that's the plan there. We have aromatherapy as well, so we can keep our mons healthy. Uh, we don't want any toxics or anything uh, spreading on our team. And then obviously soft oil to keep this thing healthy as well. So that's two Thunder Wave mons, by the way. He has a couple fast mons that I really just don't want to be fast. And I really want to just kind of get Perez. I'm not going to lie. Um, I'm a stall team, and my goal is to make the match longer and also make your team not do much your teams should not be allowed to move so yeah that's the plan next so up we have rupee our mega sableye fully physically defensive this week um the reason i'm fully physically defensive and not trying to be specially defensive is because even if i'm specially defensive um hyper voice still just blows me back so there's no point in being specially defensive i'd rather be physically defensive and take on things like the metagross and the garchomp like it's nothing like this thing pretty much eats hits from those without any real issues um as well as heracross we can eat hits from that um if it's not a guts heracross i can burn it with a will as well as being, burning things like the garchomp and metagross which could be very f essential for us uh recover to keep ourselves healthy taunt is kind of cool uh this thing does still outspeed shuckle so like this thing can lead against shuckle and just taunt it outright or if i stay unmega and i have prankster I can, um, if I stay on Mega and I have Prankster, I can taunt uh, other Mons if he doesn't bring Absol, because he can shut us, he, he can shut down any Prankster things with uh, a Dark type like Absol. He's not bringing Absol. Um, we can taunt things pretty easily and kind of force him to do offensive things that we can predict better and uh, play around. And lastly, we have Shadow Ball just for stab. Um, Looking at his team, he has no normal type, so I can pretty much freely just click Shadow Ball a lot and just get damage off on things. He actually has a decent, he actually has three mons weak to the Shadow Ball as well, which is a very, very nice thing. And some of them are like, I feel are more likely to come. So that's some big damage I can get off against his team, which will be really, really nice. So that is our Mega Sableye set. Next up, our offensive mon of the week is going to be Sanic, our Shaman. Uh, Leech Seed, Air Slash, Earth Power, and Seed Flare with enough speed to outpace. Um, I believe that's enough pace, speed to outpace base 85 speed, which I believe is Heracross. Yeah, that's max speed Heracross. So that'll be really, really nice to outspeed that thing if, if he's not scarfed. Um, we can't really outspeed anything else, so there's no point in EVing it any differently. 
Um, Leech Seed is nice for switch-ins, um, because he doesn't have, his, his grass type is Venusaur, which doesn't really have the best matchup, so it might not come, but, you know, it, it, you never know. But, uh, I don't see Venusaur particularly coming. I, like, with things like Cresselia, Zapdos, um, Registeel, Clefable coming, like, I, I don't think he has, uh, a good reason, not Clefable, uh, Chansey. Uh, I don't think he has a good reason to bring Venusaur, so I'm not too worried about it. I can freely click uh, Leech Seed, get Leech Seeds on things, and uh, have myself some nice health packs. Um, other than that, Sea Flare is also a really good click, because unless you're a Metagross, um, you're going to be taking a lot of damage from it, and like the potential for a minus 2 spidef drop as well is very, very huge. Uh, we also do have it so that we can break through the Vaporeon, which again, I don't think Vaporeon will come either because we do have the Zapdos, we do have the Shaman, uh, which pretty much say no to Vaporeon existing at all. So um, that'd be cool. Uh, we have the Air Slash because it's four times effective on the Heracross as well as being super effective on the Venusaur and just being an overall decent move. Um, again, we're also paralyzing things. So uh, Air Slash is a belief 30% chance to flinch. Yep, 30% chance to flinch the target. So. Um, Realistically, um, we can click a bunch of air slashes and potentially crit shit, or potentially flinch shit on top of it being paralyzed, which would be dope as fuck. So that's the plan with that. Um, then we have Earth Power plus Ground EMZ. Um, Earth Power is really good against things like the Chandelure, the Zergatry, uh, the Metagross, just in general. But having the Ground EMZ makes this thing so that it can actually, like, Oko Metagross, and um, I believe... I do miss out on the Oko on Chandelure slash Circuitry without. I, I think I miss out on the Oko on one without the Earth Power, without the, the Z. So, I, depending on how he builds his sets, uh, having the Z could potentially be the difference between Okoing and just uh, and dying to a move uh, from one of those mons. So, that's the plan with our Shaman. Next up, we have Spiky Burb, the Zapdos. We are running fully physically defensive Spiky Burb because realistically, like, sh Circuitry doesn't. Zergatry's not too big of a threat to this mon, like, if it's offensive enough, like, it can do some damage, but, like, we also have Shaman, which can, Shaman and Chansey, which can auto-switch into the, without any issues, so I'm not too worried about Zergatry at all, so, realistically, the things I'm worried about, um, the thing I'm worried about most in the universe is more than likely, uh, the things I'm more worried about are, like, Garchomp, uh, Metagross, um, Golbat can be annoying as well, uh, and Heracross, and this thing can eat hits from those for days, and depending on what kind of set uh, the Mons are, um, we can, I can use this kind of scout damage against them, uh, kind of figure out their sets, as well as being able to wall them pretty decently and roost up damage in front of them, um, because like this one, like, at min speed, is pr it's still pretty fast. So, like, uh, some of the mons actually have to run, like, a, some, a decent amount of speed investment to outspeed uh, Zapdos. So, like, I can pretty much roost in front of their faces, take away that flying typing, and get less, less, less of a chance of being able to uh, Oko or to KO me. So, that's really, really cool. Uh, we have the Defog to keep Hazards off our side of the field, uh, just in case the Shuckle is able to get in without me being Mega Evolved and get something up. Uh, we can get rid of it with our Zapdos without any real issues whatsoever. Um, we have Thunderbolt because Thunderbolt is just a good solid stab move to click. Um, he doesn't really have a lot of things that can stop that. The only thing that can really stop it is Garchomp as well as potentially the Venusaur because it does resist. But we have HP Ice which actually does touch both of them. Um, super effectively, so this is just a really solid set for this week. I think Zapdos does a lot of work, so that's the plan. Uh, we're just going to see if Zapdos can uh, hold his own. The last one we're bringing this week is going to be Moonduck or Cresselia, and uh, we're bringing mostly physically defensive this week, uh, just throwing whatever leftovers we had into uh, special defense. But um, this set is a really, really good thing to stop um, a scarfed uh, Moxie Heracross sweep. Uh, if it's able to pick up a kill with like Mega Horn or something, uh, we do have the Tangaberry. We can eat that uh, and kill it off with a mo with a Psy Shock or you know, Moonblast, depending on uh, what we f what we deem is the smartest play at the point. 
Usually will probably be Psyshock because Psyshock is just better because it's Stab. Um, just Psyshock, Moonblast, Moonlight, and Calm Mind. Uh, if we can get up Calm Minds, that'd be also really great. Um, that could be a really, really great thing for us in this game. Uh, if we can get a Calm Mind sweep with uh, Cresselia, that'd be awesome. The only mons on his team we can't break through are the, the only mon on his team that we really can't break through with this set is Metagross, because like, even though Mega Gardevoir like, obviously just resists the Psyshock and stuff, the Psyshock will be doing plenty once we set up enough, because it's physical defense is shit. And like, if we end up in a Calm Mind War against each other, um, his Psyshocks will be doing a lot less to me than mine will be doing to him as we set up further and further, because my physical defense is ridiculously high in comparison to, like, I have almost doubled the base physical defense that Mega Gardevoir has. I think it's had like base 65 defense, which is pretty shit. So uh, that's the, pretty much the plan. Uh, in the, the sense is like I'm going like if I end up setting up Calm Minds and make Mega Gardevoir starts doing so as well, we can just end up clicking Psy Shock after he gets plus six and just beat him down. And at that point as well, the only thing that can really the only things on this team that can really break me are Metagross, if it's like really, really invested and can somehow set up on me uh, with physical attack and just break me through me that way. Because um, I, I could probably heal off a lot of its damages. Um, Garchomp, if it's like S and D Chomp, but at the same time, like I could probably O code at that point with Moonblast. So it would have to get like a Ultra Mega Crit just to kill me immediately. Um, and the Heracross, which. The Heracross and the, the Absol. Absol is not coming because it's bad. And Heracross won't be able to Oko me because of our Tanga Berry. So, realistically, if this thing gets Calm Minds up, we pretty much just win the game uh, with it. So, that's the plan. And uh, let's hop into the battle. Um, hopefully, we can pick up a W. Alright, guys. We are here with our week number three matchup in the PLW. Still looking to get that first win in this league. Uh, you just saw our team builder, and we are up here against Noivern's Descent into Madness, coached by Michael, aka in this case Shadowstar2715. Very interesting name here on Showdown, Shadowstar2715. But uh, he brings the uh, Mega Gardevoir, uh, which I expected, uh, the Metagross, which I definitely expected, uh, Heracross, which I'm not surprised about, Zergatry, I'm not surprised about, Golbat, and Chandelure. So, like, Realistically, I thought a lot of his team could come, so I was more than okay with the matchup, so um, let's just hop into this. We're going to switch sides. He's going to lead with his shiny hair across, and I'm going to lead with my... Um, I lead straight out with my um, Mega Sableye. So I'm going to double out, expecting him to like go for a Mega Horn, perhaps. So I go into my Zapdos, predicting him to go for something just to hit my... Um, Sableye as hard as he could. Uh, so that's, I, I go into my Zapdos straight away as he doubles into his Chandelure. So I'm going to go for the Thunderbolt just straight out to pop his balloon. So I kind of scout what this thing is. He goes for Fire Blast and does a lot of damage. Now, uh, based upon the damage, I was looking at the Calx. Uh, it looked like he was modest. And due to the fact that I outsped him, that means he has like no speed investment. Or very little. So I know that I am more than likely faster than this thing with the majority of my team, which is really great. Or not a majority of my team, but like a good portion of my team is probably faster than the Chandelure. I'm um, assuming Cress is definitely faster, and I'm assuming Shaman is as well. So that's great. Um, but so I'm going to go into my Chansey here, obviously, because Chansey can just sponge any hit from the Shandy. And I'm going to go for a Thunder Wave as he switches in his Gold Bat now. This Golbat is it lives a very unfortunate life. First off, he's gonna go for a Toxic because I'm gonna switch into my Zapdos, uh, which is perfectly fine. I literally just went into Zapdos because I know I'm fast in this thing and I want to be able to roost up. He's gonna get fully paired once there. That becomes quite a trend in this matchup. I'm gonna go back out into Chansey. He's going to miss a Super Fang. Now, th do I think that Super Fang miss necessarily mattered? Not particularly. Um, it just would have changed like the order of how I would have done things. Like I would have had to just go straight for a. Um, straight for my soft boiled and just kind of get myself back up that way but that wouldn't have been that big of a deal i wasn't too worried about it so i'm gonna start going for seismic tosses here and he's gonna get fully paired there which is which sucks 
We go for the Aromatherapy, we get another Poison on Zapdos. He's going to get paralyzed again, which double sucks. So that's three paras in this match. S-Toss into another para, so that's four. S-Toss into, oh, another para. That's five paras on this Golbat. He's going to switch now into his Chandelure, because obviously I'm just going straight for Seismic Toss. He's going to go for the Taunt. Uh, which is very smart prep on his part uh, to bring Taunt. Uh, I'm not going to be able to Thunder Wave. I'm going to go for the S-Toss, literally just because I wanted him to potentially go for a um, Fire Blast or something along those lines, trying to waste more of his PP, um, which has worked out in my favor, so that's great. Uh, so now I'm going to switch into Zapdos. Um, so I know I can eat a hit. He's going to go for the Energy Ball, which uh, I understand entirely. Um... Like, part of me wanted to flame him for this play initially, but I get it because I guess he realized that plan, and, like, he knew I couldn't heal myself up, so at least anything would be chip damage. So, um, that's perfect for me because, uh, that gave my Zapdos a pretty much free switch in. So now I'm going to be able to roost in front of his face, he's going to miss another Fire Blast. That's two Fire Blasts he's missed now, too. This guy is not catching a break, so I'm going to go for a Thunderbolt as he's going to go into his Zergatry. I go for a second one, and I outspeed. Now, the Chandelure I can maybe understand. Chandelures can be run a little bit bulkier, maybe bulky combine sets, things like that. I understand. But the fact that he outsped a Zerkatry, which... It just didn't make any sense. I was really confused as to what kind of set he was, because it was doing damage based upon, like... Like, I'm going to pull up my calcs and hopefully see, like, what was going on here. Like, obviously, I'm fully physically offensive, so I'm not, like, super strong. Zerkitri. I'm going to go for, off of the offensive set. I did 22%, which, to me, was confusing because it did not look like the damage I was supposed to be. Turns out he was max HP... Zerkatry. Max HP Zerkatry and you're about to see the kind of absolutely batshit crazy set this Zerkatry ended up being. Because he needs to go for Thunderbolt. It does 88%. You know what that means? That means he is a modest Choice specs, I'm pretty sure he's modest specs. He's either modest specs or timid specs, but like, I'm pretty sure he's modest specs Zerkatry. What? What? Uh, there was no universe where I could have expected that kind of set to come out. There's no universe where I would have expected that, but like, that damage was terrifying. I saw my HP drop and I was like, what the fuck just happened? What did I just get hit with? What the hell? Uh, but I, I think in my head, I was like, wait, I outspeed him. So I'm gonna, I'm okay. I'm able to roost up, and I can start kind of PP stalling the Zerkatry, because I'm pressure, obviously. So unless he crit me there, he wasn't going to kill me. So I'm able to kind of freely roost up again as he's going to go into his hair across. Now, I'm thinking he might be scarfed, and uh, he does outspeed me here. He goes for the Stone Edge. So at this point, I'm thinking he's scarfed. Now, I do crit him there. And that is unfortunate. That is very unfortunate because that puts him in range for a lot of different things on my team. Um, more in range than it, he possibly could have been without the crit. Like, he could have potentially lived a hit from certain other mods and switched into other things if that had not crit. So that's very unfortunate uh, for him. He's just he's just not catching a break in this, in this game whatsoever. So I'm going to have to switch here, obviously. I think he's locked in, so I'm going to go into my uh, Cresselia. So... Going into Crest was kind of like a two a two part thing. I go into Crest because I think he's locked in, so I know I can eat a Stone Edge. But secondly, at the same time, I'm thinking like I have the Tanga Berry, right? So even if he's not Scarf, if he's some other set, um, I can eat the Stone Edge and then eat a Mega Horn following that and kill him right out with a Psy Shock. So that was the plan there. Uh, so he's actually going to go into the Chandelure as I'm actually going to go for a Psy Shock. Uh, it's going to do a little bit of damage, uh, but I'm, I don't want to take a Shadow Ball, so I'm going to go out into my Chansey. Chansey is just free switch here. And now I'm going to double into Shaman. Now the reason I double into Shaman is that I predicted that taunt to come out 
So Shaman is a pretty free switch here. I'm going to go for an Air Slash as the Golbat comes in. Doesn't really matter because I'm going to be able to hit that second Air Slash and knock him out. So bye-bye to Golbat. Now he's going to go out into the Heracross. Still thinking that he is Choice Scarfed, I'm obviously going to switch out because I don't want to take the chance of taking a Mega Horn on my uh, very offensive Shaman set. Um, because I don't want Shaman to die. So I'm going to go out into Von Strigel here. Even though I'm Spadef, I do eat that Mega Horn very nicely. I'm going to eat a second one and be able to get off the Paralysis, the nice Thunder Wave. So now I'm going to go out into my Zapdos, because I need as much different... Like, I've lost two weeks in a row. I need as much differential as I possibly can muster right now. That's kind of my mindset throughout this entire matchup. I need differential badly. So I'm going to go out to Zapdos here to preserve my Fable as well as preserve differential points as much as possible. So I, I eat that Mega Horn decently well and now I can eat another one. So I'm just going to roost up in his face, which is perfectly fine. I'm going to roost up again so I can remove my Electrotyping as he goes for a Volt Switch. The damage is just too high. Um, but he's going to go out to Chandelure, and now based upon the Thunderbolt damage from last time, I know I can kill him. So I go straight for that, which is nice. He's going to go back out to the Zerker Tree. I know I can just roost in this thing's face, so I'm not worried. So he's going to go for the Thunderbolt, and I'm just going to keep keep up this trend. I'm just going to roost in his face, and there's nothing he can do about it. There's literally nothing he can do about me roosting in his face and just stalling out his Thunderbolt. But now I'm actually going to go out into Shaman, because... Um, realistically, I calc it based upon the set that he I, I thought he was... And I knew he could not kill me. I knew he could not kill my Shaman even with a crit. I knew it would do maybe about half, like right around half. The crit obviously made it do over half, but it would do around half, at, a little under half at most. Uh, so I wasn't worried about switching in Shaman here. And like if he did double out into something else, like it would it would work fine. The only thing that would have been a little bit more threatening would have been if he doubled into the Gardevoir. But like. At the end of the day, like, some of the sets he was running, I, I wasn't super worried, I guess, when it comes to the, um, Guard of War. I was thinking he might have been, like, a weird set on that as well. So, I'm um, very intrigued. Um, I was very intrigued at this point by some of his sets. So, uh, he brings in the hair across here as I go for an Earth Power, and it's going to chip him down a little bit. Now, I go for the Air Slash because I'm trying to, I was trying to figure out the math, and I was just kind of, like, I was struggling. So, I, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do the math or not. But, um, able to uh, get that uh, air slash off there. I, I went for it. I kind of YOLO'd at this point because I wasn't sure about, like, what his speed would be, like, after the paralysis with the scarf and whatnot. Because I'm 100% convinced he was Choice Scarf Heracross. 100% convinced, and you cannot convince me otherwise. Unless you're actually Michael and you send me the, uh, your, the uh, your, your team. Like, if you actually send me the spreads. That's the only way you could convince me that that was not a Choice Scarf Heracross. However, we are able to outspeed the Scarf Heracross because it's paralyzed, and we were able to kill it with this Air Slash. So that is two kills for your boy, Shaman, out here. Now, he goes into the Metagross, and this is such a perfect opportunity. I was sitting here like, all right, he goes to Tree, I click Earth Power, and we kill the Zergatry, and that's that's fine there. He goes Metagross, he goes into Gardevoir, and then I have to switch out maybe into Crest, maybe kind of form like a Calm Mind War kind of thing going on, uh, kind of see what we can do there. Um because that would have been realistically the only way we would have beaten it uh, with Cress, um, but that's fine. Uh, and then if he goes Metagross, obviously we pop our Z, because realistically he's probably going to A, not see that coming um, at this point in the matchup. We can just pop our Z on him, and it works out really nicely, and we can just eliminate the threat immediately. Unless he's Shuka, or like really bulky with AV, he's not living this, and he does not live this. Earth Power, Tectonic Rage is going to knock him out straight away, and the Earth Power is going to be able to take out the Zergatry. So that's four kills for your boy, Shaman. Now I'm going to be able to switch into Chansey here as he Mega Evolves and goes for a Calm Mind, and I'm like, oh no. No, my 6-0. I'm going to be able to paralyze this Gardevoir, and then outspeed and go for a Soft Boil as he actually ends up being fully paired. So that's huge. He went, he's not able to get off a second side shock on me, and I'm going to be able to hit him with a seismic toss. I have speed him now, so I'm going to be able to get my damage off before he gets it off on me. 
So it's another para on the Gardevoir. S-Toss, he's going to not get paralyzed in this turn. He's not, but not going to be able to kill me with that next Psy Shock, and I'm going to be able to finish him off and pick up a big, big 6-0 win. Um, yes, there was a lot of hacks. I'm not going to fight that. There was a shit ton of hacks on the, in this matchup. We hacked the Golbat out of existence. Um, the Chandelure did almost no damage in the majority of the game because it missed half of its Fire Blasts. And we did get those few pairs there on the guard board, but regardless of that, I don't really think, like, I only hacked half of his team. Realistically, like, I was able to play smart enough around the rest of his team that, like, it didn't really do much. So, I'm not too, too unhappy with how this match went. Like, obviously, like, if the hacks hadn't happened, it could have potentially been a very different game. It would have lost some differential points, but I think based upon how... Uh, the match was being played on both sides. I think I still would have probably won. Just a matter of time, but it's whatever, you know? I mean, that's why you bring moves like Thunder Wave to games in the first place. That's why you do things like that, because you want to get the hacks. You want to lower their speed. You want to potentially get those free turns to do whatever you want. You know, that's the way, that's part of the game of Pokemon. You know, you take advantage of that. That's why stall teams exist. That's why um, the moves exist to cause the status condition. So you just take advantage of what you can take advantage of. It's it's a game. It's the game of Pokemon. That's the game we play. And uh, that's just what we gotta go with. So here we are with the 6 w or That brings us right up into positive differential. We're like 1 and 2 with plus 2 differential, which is awesome. So um, GG to Michael. Uh, his sets were really weird and interesting. Like the specs... Zerk just threw me off. Modest max HP, max special attack, modest spec Zerk. Crazy. That modest max HP um, air balloon Shandy was pretty cool. Um, Scarf Heracross is dope. And, like, the Calm Mind Gardevoir scared the fuck out of me, dude. Calm Mind Gardevoir scared the absolute fuck out of me. I, I almost, I actually was half tempted to switch into Clefable at some point during that and, like, moonlight up in front of it. Because, uh, since I was unaware, then, like, the Calm Minds wouldn't have mattered. But he still does so much damage to me, even if... Like, he does still does so much damage to me with Psy Shock. Like, it, it was not a safe play to go to do that. So, I actually, I had to stay in with Chansey there. Because, realistically, Chansey was one of the only things that was really going to appreciate that. I could have also gone into uh, Cresselia. But, it's fine. Uh, we still picked up the W, but... GG again to Michael. Uh, if you guys have enjoyed this matchup, please make sure to leave a like down below and subscribe if you have not already. And until next time, guys, I am Poke Primer signing off.